Welcome to Countryside Knitting. My name is Mariette and I run this YouTube channel together with Janne. We have done everything in Norwegian so far, but now we have started to, to try to do um, double. But this uh, short kind of, not a, maybe an episode, but this is a, a bonus for you who don't understand Norwegian and who would like to see what kind of cardigans I have made through a lot of years. Um, I just rush through a lot of them. Um, not very many details like about sticking and construction. I have to practice more my vocabulary. So you have a look. I will say what I uh, what I can. <laughs> um, if I'm going to do more in depth I will have to... depth? Oh, sorry. Um, depth? Definitely not. Um, but if I'm going to, to, uh, to talk more in detail, I would just have to prepare a lot more. Uh, and I have a Ravelry page. You can take a look. Uh, a lot of these patterns are only in Norwegian. So, not so much I can do about that. But this is my bonus Norwegian traditional knit and especially cardigans. Welcome to this episode. I have a lot of books that you um, could read. Some of them are also in English and when it comes to cardigans and then when it comes to knitting in general and history and almost everything about the knitting and the fiber and the whole um, picture. Uh, I will recommend Annemor Sundbø. I have made two interviews with her, but that's uh, that's Norwegian. This is English, and it's quite old, but it's uh, a very good book about Seta style sweaters, the history of the Norwegian lice pattern. Anne Sundbø has worked with fiber-related um, issues all her life, and she knows so much. So, if you want to know more about history, this is the place to go. She also have, um, she has this book, Invisible Threads in the Art of Knitting, something like that. This is my favorite so far. Um, she still uh, publishes books. There are so many interesting things that she says, and there are a lot of uh, patterns. Uh, or you can have the charts, not completely, not like cardigan patterns, uh, but the history. Um, uh, it's connected to how they, um, folklore, um, how they thought. It's also a kind of rel religious uh, point of view because um, all these patterns have a significance. Um, it was a way to protect themselves, they believed, and I find that very interesting. She has a very new book that's called Kofte Arven, that would be the heritage of cardigans. Maybe it's going to be translated, I'm, I haven't checked, but this is so far in Norwegian, and it's so thick. I haven't read all of it, I have read some of it, and I have also interviewed her about some of the things. Um, there is so much uh, to find in these books and I, like I say about many things that I mention, I could make episodes about only her and only this book. So if you want to, to learn more, if you're interested in all the things connected to the knitting and to the wool and to the making, Annemor Sundbø is really a place to go. I will write her name down in the show notes so you can have a look at her. Her books. Thank you very much for all the nice comments you made on the episode where I was here last time. 
I showed you some of the things that I have made and last time I tried to do English patterns because I thought maybe you would like to see what I make that you can make. But a lot of you said that you would like to see what I need from Norwegian patterns. So I'm going to show you a lot of, of my kofter, that is cardigans like this one, except uh, there will be more stranded uh, knitting uh, than just this. So I have um, been around the house. Some of these are mine, some of uh, these things I will show you are my husband's and my children. I have uh, knit almost everything myself. In Norway we, we do a lot of knitting um, in thick wool and with, when it comes to, to wool I would just say um, I am not so good to talk about fingering, DK and all that things because we don't use that terms. So if you would like to, to know what kind of wool, um, because er almost everything is wool, uh, you will have to uh, take a look uh, in my Ravelry page, at my page. Or you could do, I will just give you some things um, uh, you could do if you wanted to prepare a little bit. Um, Diana Waller, she's um, a Canadian living in Norway, I think, at the moment. She has a YouTube channel called Pi Paper Tiger and she has made an episode called Let's Talk About Norwegian Wool. I will link to it below so you can take a look at that. And uh, Skane Dere Knits, I guess you know her. She is a Norwegian uh, woman living in London and she makes, um, she has a, a YouTube channel called Skane Dere Knits where she speak, speaks only English. And she has a Ravelry page called Norwegian, uh, called Skander, and in that you can find Norwegian Yarn and Knitting Help Desk. So if you have questions, I don't think I can answer them, but you can take a look at her Ravelry page. And at the same time when you're there, check out her designs. They are so nice. But this will be a very traditional episode. I have knit since I was uh, a child. I don't know exactly what age I was and my mother uh, knit and my uh, grandmother's knit. Everybody around me knit. So um, I cannot really remember how it was not to be able to knit. I don't think I made uh, cardigans like this in the beginning, of course. Uh, nobody does. But I have knit cardigans like I'm going to show you now for a very long time. Um, and that is what I enjoy most, I think. One of the most typical things I have, and I don't know what the yarn is, because I didn't write it down and now I don't remember. I think I knit this in 1994 when the Olympics was in Lillehammer. This is a cardigan. It's huge, because we all we like to have a very um, big uh, clothes back then. The pattern's name is Telemark and that is the name of the area where I come from. Uh, right now I live, or right now, I have for the 20 past years or more lived in um, uh, another part. I can show you on the map. This is Telemark. Quite thick yarn. Um, I like this so much and now uh, it is about to fall apart. I have to do some reparations. I think I have to do some mending. Just I haven't got more of this yarn. So, typical Norwegian with lies. We call them uh, lies, these dots. Um, so this was the first. And another one that I have made, I made about the same time was uh, this one. I made it some years later actually. This is called Voss. That's a place uh, quite close to Bergen. And this is the pattern. Maybe I can show you the back. You can see more of the pattern. 100% wool. Everything here is 100% wool. A lot to, um, to think about when you knit this because they are almost the same but not exactly. I have worn this a lot, especially when it's Christmas. And the yarn is, this is not the color of course, but it's Rauma, 
Tretrås drikkegarn. Maybe a kind of decay. I'm not sure. Rauma, uh, that's a factory quite close to me. I have to get in the car and drive for about two and two hours, maybe, and um, I'm there. So I have bought a lot from the factory and in the shops, of course. And I think you can get this, I think in America there's a uh, woolly thistle, isn't it? I hear that everybody else talks about that and they have Rauma. It is soft in a woolly way, if you understand. I often use this outside of uh, other things so I could wear this with this on the outside and I don't need anything else and if it rains I will not get wet because this keeps the water outside and that's the best thing about wool maybe um, if you get wet you don't get cold I need two of these let me show you the same yarn these are called um, Turidal, that's a place outside of Kristiansand in the south. I made one for myself and one for my husband. And thick and warm and nice and it goes with everything. You can see people wearing uh, cardigans like this every day. Let me see. I have one thing that I have not made myself but I wanted to show you. This is bought on the, in the shop called Husfriden. You can see here. Or maybe, I think, yes, Husfriden. Uh, I'm quite sure this is Rauma, the same yarn, because Husfriden uh, was at least connected to Rauma garn. And it has a name, but I don't remember. This is not made by me, I just bought it. This also is very traditional. When I say this is traditional Norwegian, uh, it's a lie, actually, because in the same time, at the same time, it is Norwegian. It's also international. These patterns uh, didn't come from a Norwegian uh, brain. It is uh, something we have inherited from many places. So where do I continue? I have, um, oh, I have one more very traditional. I should have had a uh, Marius, but that is uh, somewhere else. Um, it's uh, gone with the children. I don't know where it is. But this is some the the, um, the pattern that Marius was based on. This is called Setestal. There are a lot of variations. We have one that was connected to the fall costume. That is where. It, um, with strict rules how it should look, but this is one of the variations. This was knit for my youngest and he doesn't want to use it. Makes me so... <laughs> Typical, not fancy enough. And then I have some um, things that are kind of a mix, it's newer at least. This one it's something I made uh, 20 years ago. Uh, I don't remember. I don't think the pattern has a name. It has a number. And it is um, Dal. That's all I know. And I did, didn't do anything in Ravelry at that time. So with the XO, quite typical, like Fair Isle and so on. And the uh, same thickness of the yarn. I have a lot of. These are a little bit um, warm to have if you are inside, but outside they are super. Okay, now next one will be a um, um, cardigan called Klassica. That will be the classical one. Um, the pattern um, is very traditional. It's like this. And the designer is um, I have a photo of the designer, if I just can find the right book. The designer is Vanya Blix Langsrø. Uh, you can see her, <laughs> that will be left. She has made a lot of nice uh, cardigan patterns and this is one of them. And I love it. And the way I, the, the arms are knit, 
is a bit special. I don't know the English name for it, but it's uh, it's very nice. This yarn is not a Rauma. This is uh, Osk, and I had my Osk skein somewhere. This is Hillesvog. Osk is a little bit thinner than the uh, the three ply. Is that the name? Uh, this is uh, maybe light DK or something. Um, Hundred percent wool. I love it. This was the first jacket I made in Osk, and I have used it a lot. This was a kind of an advent uh, mystery cowl, so I knit this the first year. And the next year I made this one, uh, Vanya Blix Longstru uh, Vanya Strik. And this one, this is Rauma Fienul. You may have heard about the Rauma Fienul. Uh, this is one of my favorites, but I gave it to my husband. Sometimes I use it myself. Traditional, um, nice pattern. And last year I made also in the Advent Mystery Cal this one. I think I'll show you the back. The, there are hearts all over and then something at the top and the bottom. Also based on traditional patterns. Finul, also. Finul, I think, and Osk, they are my favorites. Uh, we have a lot of books about cardigans, knitted cardigans with the traditional patterns. And if I would, I would love to show you all, um, but that would be a bit exhausting. So I have just picked out some of them. And this is one of them. I am about to start, or I have actually cast on, um, but just with five uh, rows, I think. A cardigan from Tone Loeng. Uh, she has done a lot of work to collect old patterns as well. I could tell you more about that uh, later. Uh, I haven't got it here. You will uh, find it in the episode that we're going to make almost at the same time as this uh, goes out. Uh, when uh, I said about Diana Walla, the Canadian uh, who sometimes stay in Norway, she also has a pattern or two, I'm not sure, in this book, Ruter or Luz. This is uh, from uh, a factory that made uh, clothing, on uh, wool clothing. Um, outside of Bergen and there are a lot of nice things and if you follow me and watch my episodes you will maybe see me knit something I have some plans uh, here it is actually I have a lot of plans sometimes they never come alive so I'm not sure uh, there's also this one uh, 42 Norske Kofter, meaning 42 Norwegian cardigans or Kofte. This is almost like a Bible in a way. There are a lot of traditional patterns. I have made Setstal based on this, if I can find it. As you can see, I'm not giving away important information here, I think. Setstal. There are so many nice things. Uh, I don't know where to start. This one, I actually cast on once, but I frogged it because my color contrast was not good enough. So I made something else. Um, and then oh, I have something more I should have shown you. Fauna. I didn't bring it. I will do that next time. There is so much to to take out of uh, my wardrobe. Um, the next book I want to show you is Strikk til gutta, Anne Stine Thune. She and uh, her mother has been designers for a lot of years and they have, uh, like in this book, you can see, this is a typical sweater or um, cardigan, or both, actually, you can choose. 
so many nice things. I knit a mitten from this book and you will see in the episode that we are about to publish. There is a, a series, what do you call series? Uh, there are three books. Um, Kofteboken 1, 2, 3. That means Kofteboken 1, 2 and 3. And they are 1, 2, 3. Oh, I cannot speak today. This was number 1. They, if, if there are some Norwegian Bibles about Kofte, I think this is the one. And the next two following. Um, Liv Sandvik Jakobsen. She had a blog where she decorated the house and that was actually what she was uh, her focus was but then she always had some old cardigans knitted with these traditional patterns in the in the uh, in the rooms lying somewhere or and people kept on asking what is that jacket what kind of pattern and she didn't know she didn't even know the pattern had a name so she started something that she she wanted people to, to give the answers because um, she said, this is a cardigan, who knows what the name is. And she started uh, to collect the names of the cardigans. And that has now uh, become three books. And this is number one. I have knit, I think, two. I have knit Bervadrin, but I couldn't find it. <laughs> it's somewhere in pink and uh, white. I will show you someday. Um, and I have also knit one that is called Sommerlet. This one. Well, I can show you the uh, cardigan itself instead of the photo in the book. And this is how it looks. This is Ask. This is actually the same color as this. And Ask this is not dyed, I think. This is natural. It is so soft. There's something special with not uh, undyed usk. Um, I think. <laughs> um, there was a problem. There were I had three strands uh, of yarn at the same time, and that made it a little bit s stiff in a way. So it is not very good. It looks a bit strange. Uh, I will not do anything with it. I use it at home. Um, not so much out because sometimes you do mistakes. I think uh, to make it uh, work with three uh, strands, that's difficult. I have the practice, but I find it difficult. That was number one. We have Kofte Boken 2. A lot of nice patterns I could show you, but I think uh, it will be so. In a hurry, I think I would have to prepare more and maybe um, do some of the books at a time. The thing that I have made from this book is something called Long Yndlingskofte, meaning uh, long favorite cardigan. And when I made this, I tried a new yarn that I would, if you have a possibility to to do something with this yarn, I really recommend it. And now, this is not exactly the same. Well, if you find uh, felt wool, no, what is the name? Felt wool? A special kind of breed of <laughs> sheep. This is the thin sölja. I used tinde, that's the thicker version. I didn't find a skein when I ran around the house. Because this is a grey base, it gets colors that are so much more playful than the others. So this, I love colors like these. And this is long, as you can see. These um, color work uh, in the yoke and then nothing more, just stock net stitch. It has, um, what to call it, a halo, isn't that? Uh, this is a little bit stiff, uh, itchy when you work, when you knit it, but it becomes softer when you use it on, when you wash it. So this is also a favorite. I have many favorites. I use cardigans, um, home knit cardigans every day. 
Um, I think there is only one left from what I selected for this episode. Um, that is, uh, well, I'll just have to show you. There is one more book, uh, Kofteboken 3. It came in November and I have not knit anything from it yet. But I have some plans and I will tell you later on. But I've also knit from um, a designer called Anne Kjerstin Hegdar. She has a lot of nice uh, cardigans and I, as I've said, if you watch my episodes from now on, uh, you will see, they will come. I have at least two more uh, I will do this spring or summer. This is knit top down. Um, I don't think... This was made top down. And um, this one was made top down. Uh, but except for that, I don't think anything else was knit top down. That is, uh, we used to do it in the old days and then we forgot about it and then it came back with the Americans. This is knit top down. Uh, Anne Kjerstin Hegdar, Jonsok Kofte, the summer solistis, uh, flowers. This is a very nice way of increasing. Uh, inside the pattern. I really loved it. And look at this lace at the bottom. The yarn is really thin and it's uh, Danish and it's called Holst Super Soft. A bit thin and strange to work with but when you wash it, uh, it blooms as they say. And now I see I have something more I forgot. The whole floor is filled with cardigans around me. Uh, there is a um, Norwegian knitting designer called Kristin Viola Ödegård. She has a lot of books and I just uh, show you one because this is uh, with only cardigans. A lot of color work and a lot of traditional inspired patterns. And I, The first one I made from her was Retro. I'm nostalgic <laughs> uh, with um, old fashioned colors or maybe fashion now, <laughs> I'm not sure. Easy to knit with. This is uh, Nepal, that's a uh, wool and alpaca blend from Drops. Quite thick, I've used it a lot and I have made, I don't know, four maybe of these for myself, for my daughter, for my son. As a sweater and right now I am working on this one, Høstruta, an uh, autumn design in uh, Finul and PT2. It will be in the uh, episodes. <laughs> so I'm working, this book is always uh, on my table. I have more I forgot. I have also uh, um, Pinneguri. She's one of my favorites. She doesn't have any books, but she has. Oh, she has uh, digital books, but she has a lot of patterns on the Ravelry. And this one, uh, Angry Sheep Cardigan, is one of my favorites. Um, the Flea Cardigan, that's absolutely my favorite. And this one is something called Trudilut. Very difficult to. Um, translate into like uh, like if you sing something it's a small trudelut <laughs> it's a rhyme only a kind of a, a rhyme children's word the funny thing about this is that I the pattern says you put the flowers where you want as many as you want and I did this is the back And the front. Color work all the way. And this pattern is what we use in mittens a lot, I think, but also in cardigans. Christmas. Christmassy. <laughs> so, yeah, I have a lot of uh, cardigans and I want to make more. Um, 
if you have any questions about the things that I have shown you, I will recommend that you go to my Ravelry page. And some of the old things I have uh, not um, registered anywhere because I didn't do that at the time. But you can find a lot. And the last thing. Sometimes, um, I am not a designer at all, but sometimes I put together things from other patterns and use my scrap yarns and so on. And I, in the early 90s, I think, I made this one. It is not very, it is not pretty. I wouldn't say, but it's funny. Um, this is actually from the Bible. It's an old, uh, one of the um, <coughs> stories about uh, the, uh, the bridal. What's the name? Oh, I should have checked. The good and the, the bad uh, for, the <coughs> for the wedding. Uh, I'll just skip that one. <laughs> Here they have dark hair, and here they have with a light color and roses. This is a quite thick and big sweater, but I like to wear it when I'm outside working, for instance. Uh, it's nice, but it's a bit old in colors and everything. So I think that's it. I have a lot to show and I cannot show everything at the same time because that will be too much. Anything else I need to say? I hope that you enjoy um, my English episodes. I find it awkward to speak English and put it out on the uh, YouTube. I listen a lot to English but I never stayed for a long time in an English speaking country and that's why I sometimes have to think about what the words are and my accent is is absolutely not uh, if I was a Norwegian if I were a Norwegian I wouldn't listen to myself in English <laughs> um, but I hope that uh, that you enjoy what I show you and um, it's fun to reach out to, to the rest of the world that could be like Finland <laughs> Like, countries quite close, but that don't understand Norwegian. So if you like what you see, uh, you can give me a thumbs up. That would be very nice. And if you want to subscribe, uh, please do. And uh, I will continue uh, with Janne. That we make one episode in Norwegian, and then we try to record almost the same in English. So you don't have to watch the Norwegian. They will be almost the same. From now on, we have a lot of old episodes that are only in Norwegian, of course. Well, have a nice day and keep on knitting. <laughs> I will.
Thank you.